Burdette, I see we're doing some shopping today. Welcome back to the Santa Fe Opera. Thank you very much. Thrilled to be here. In honor of our 2021 season, we have 21 questions. Awesome. Are you ready? I am ready. So you're singing Quince in our company premiere of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Can you describe Quince in three words? Describe Shakespeare's autobiographical Quince in three words? Yes, we have, he's a craftsman, he's a playwright, he's a producer. What's your elevator pitch of A Midsummer Night's Dream? I'm glad you asked me that. Uh, Midsummer Night's Dream is a story of enchantment set here in the land of enchantment. It's a story about, about torment and about love and about uh, uh, reconciliation and it's about magic. Uh, and it's set on this, this uh, incredible Britain soundscape, otherworldly soundscape. And most of all, it is a comedy that is actually funny. Kevin, what are you reading right now? Duck! <laughs> That's a terrible, I will never let go of that joke. Uh, I am reading Brene Brown's Daring Greatly, which explains why I do silly jokes like that. I'm, I'm trying to make the journey away from perfectionism, uh, trying to let go of what will people think and letting me think that I am enough, even if my jokes are What's different about open air opera? Well, there's open air opera and there's, oh my, and there is uh, Santa Fe Opera. And uh, Santa Fe Opera, where you look straight through the set into the mountains and you're in this, uh, this architectural marvel and you're already in a space where you're connected with the audience. Everyone is connected together. Uh, 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 opera's about vibrating, about, about vibrating together and about connecting. Uh, and there are issues in open air doing that. You have to know how to do it, but here in Santa Fe, uh, uh, they're secondary because we're already unified. As a performer, you travel a lot. Do you think you're a good travel buddy? I think I am an okay, I need to dial, call a friend, call my wife. She's like, no, I think I'm an okay travel buddy. I like to get in the fabric of uh, wherever I am, find the local cuisine, find the local hikes. I'm a bird watcher, <laughs> it's ridiculous. And so I like to go and see the local birds, see what the birds uh, are that I add them to my list. I'm, I'm an okay travel buddy. If you were not an opera singer, what would you be doing? Well, I'm formerly an attorney, so I might, wouldn't possibly be an attorney, but if I were to quit now and do anything, it would be a teacher. If you went out for karaoke, what song would you pick? I am from Tennessee, so I would have to say anything Elvis. I'm a big Elvis fan. Um, I'd like to apologize for that. Do you collect anything? Uh, scarves, and so I'm glad that you came uh, because this is my new collection. I collect, uh, I collect bits from funny people. So I like to watch comedies and, uh, and then of course write it off because you know, it's research. Uh, and then steal the best bits. What's your most beloved bit? Oh, my favorite bit, John Cleese, Ministry of Funny Walks. I do it in almost any show I'm in that is comedic. Uh, watch for it in Midsummer Night's Dream. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Kevin, what do you do for self-care? I like to, I go for runs and I like to commune with nature. Uh, I find that very, <sighs> it goes back to being in the fabric of a place too. What's your guilty pleasure? Uh, I would say my guilty pleasure is Etienne Dupuis uh, singing the Quatorze uh, 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 Claudel Canimet, uh, the uh, love blows as the wind blows. The Butterworth Bar, oh my goodness, it starts in French and it goes English. And that to me is just like a guilty pleasure. You know, it's like, oh, I feel like such a polymath. Kevin, what's on your bucket list? I would like to uh, hike the Appalachian Trail. What's the weirdest gift you've ever received? Um, the most annoying gift I ever received was the gift of gab, which I'm having a hard time stifling. Uh, I did once though receive a foot long shoehorn with a duck on it from my brother. I was in first grade, so mm, I still have it though. Would you rather be hot or cold? Hey, uh, Chris, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna probably have to buy this now, aren't I? Uh, here, in, here in Santa Fe, I'd rather be in the high desert. Let's be hot. Uh, I use that, so maybe it increases the worth or maybe I need to put it on my tab. Thank you so much. What's the name again? 
Oh, it's um, Charles McKay. Kevin, hmm. what's your birthday meal? Charles, Charles. Hmm? Sorry, what was the question? What's your birthday meal? My birthday meal, I remember it well. It was 47 years ago. Uh, colostrum, delightful. What's the most spontaneous thing you've ever done? Well, I was gonna say that last answer, but I would be lying because I actually had that all just ready to go when I said it. Uh, probably this answer, since I had another answer ready. This answer is the most spontaneous thing I've ever done. Look at that. Kevin, can you do any impressions? I can do an impression of instruments. I used to sit in the back of a youth orchestra, and so I listened to all these instruments. I do the bassoon and the and it, it goes on, and other instruments too. Uh, it's not that important. Immersive. What's your favorite board game? Um, I like set. I play set with my daughter all the time. It's not a board game, uh, but she does get bored with it. <laughs> Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Oh, that's a hard yes. I mean, I don't do it every time, but I do feel like the combination of sweet and salty with the fat of the cheese. I mean, it is the atavistic primal in us to survive. <laughs> Cats Agua. or dogs? And here I didn't even know dogs was a musical. <laughs> okay. Kevin, mm. what's your dream role? My dream role is a role that has not yet been written. It's being written now in our time in of our place where all the protagonists of our own story. Um, there are other great roles too. And I think we talked about one of my dream roles is Quince. Dream, Miss our nice dream, Quince. <laughs> it's Quince. Final question. Why opera? Why opera? Because uh, 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 it's, it's about connections. I'm a storyteller, I tend to ramble on, and for me, opera provides this way to vibrate with other people. You vibrate with your colleagues on stage, and you vibrate with the audience, and your vibrations, they go over the pit, and they vibrate in the audience's Christ space, and in their chest, where their heart is. And when you make that connection, you realize, as Mary Ann Wolfe said, that you are unique, but you are not alone. Kevin, this has been weird mm -hmm. and wonderful. Thank you so much for shopping with us today. It was my pleasure. Thanks for letting me live at that intersection of weird and wonderful. You take care. You take care. Care. It's a pull. It's a pull. If you, uh, is, is it? Chris, if. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna, I'm gonna get Mike Ortiz in here and we're just gonna work on the door and it won't be, a, oh, okay.